That's true. Receiving is not the problem. What's the problem? Failure to ask might be one of your major problems. I don't know. Check it out. The guy says, oh, now I see it. I got up last year and hit it every day, but there's not a scrap of paper with my goal. Good work. Poor ask. So you've got to change it. Here's number three. Receiving is like the ocean. There's plenty. Especially in California. It's like an ocean here. Success is not in short supply. It isn't rationed. And you stepped up to the window and it was all gone. No, no, no. It's like an Now, if that's true, what's the problem? Well, some people go to the ocean with a teaspoon. <laughs> Have you got the picture? See, what you want to do in view of the size of the ocean is trade your teaspoon for at least a bucket, and you'll look better down at the ocean. <laughs> Kids won't make fun of you, right? Okay. Now, there's two ways to ask, and we'll wrap up goal setting. Two ways. Here's number one. Ask with intelligence. It didn't say ask intelligently, but I'm sure it meant that. Don't mumble. You don't get anything by mumbling. Be clear. Be specific. Intelligent asking means how wide, how high, how soon, when, what size, what color, how much. Define what you want and describe what you want. That's powerful. In the weekend seminar we teach, goals become like a magnet. They pull you that direction. And the better you describe them, the more they pull. So ask intelligently. Here's number two. Ask with faith. That's the childish part of the equation. Believe you can get what you want like a child, not an adult. Adults are too skeptical. So the formula really reads, make plans like an adult and believe in them like a child. And the most incredible things will happen. You just try it for 90 days. Just try it. You can always go back to the old ways. Just try it just 90 days later. Now, here's the last qualifying phrase on goal setting, as we promise to qualify everything. And it simply goes like this. Remember, you won't get everything you want. And we've already studied the reason for that. Simply, sometimes it hails on your crop and rains on your parade. It's that kind of plan. So you won't get everything you want. But if you will work this goal setting formula, you can get plenty for wealth and happiness. That's goal setting. We use it around the world. We recommend it. Now, maybe it won't work as well for you as it has for me. I don't know. Maybe not. But what if it did? You've got to try. Okay. Here's the last subject, the day that turns your life around. Let me just quickly give you a list of four emotions that can change your life in one day. Emotions are powerful. Sometimes it doesn't take much to alter your whole life. Okay, here they are. Number one, disgust. Powerful emotion. Disgust says, I... something small or something major, the day you can say, I've had it, may not be the day it ends, but the day it begins. That's what I said when that little Girl Scout left my door when I'm 25. I give her the big lie, she leaves, I say, 
I don't want to live like this anymore. I've had it with Lion and Brook. Powerful day. The man's finally had it with mediocrity. He's had it with being a loser. He's finally had it with those awful sick feelings inside. Knowing his wife is at the grocery store, looking at two cans of beans, one mark 37 cents, one mark 39 cents, and the guy sick inside knows his wife's going to buy the 37 cent can, and she doesn't even like the brand. Do you know why she's going to buy the 37 cent can? To save two cents. The guy sick inside finally says, I've had it. Being on my knees in the dust looking for pennies? We're not living like this in Could be the day to turn your life around. The day you could say, I've had it. He walks into his closet and rips everything in it to shreds and says, I've worn this embarrassing stuff. That's those knots in the pit of your stomach, right? Waking up in the middle of the night in a cold sweat, trying to decide. We sometimes call it inner civil war. What shall I do? Well, for progress, you must decide. The best advice I can give you came from a wealthy friend of mine who said, if it's easy, do it easy. If it's hard, do it hard. Just get it done. If you went home tonight and in the next few days cleaned up a whole list of decisions, that might furnish enough inspiration for the next ten years. I found this out many times after you've decided getting on with it is easier than deciding. Sometimes decision is the toughest one. Here's the next emotion, desire, wanting too bad enough. And I don't know how to tell you to want to. That's something you've got to come up with. There's two things I know about desire. Number one, it comes from inside, not outside. You don't send off for it. Number two, I know desire can be triggered by something. Who knows what it might be? Sometimes desire waits and sleeps for something to happen. Maybe it's a book. Maybe it's a song. Maybe it's a sermon. Maybe it's a lecture, a seminar. Maybe it's the conversation of a friend, a happening, an event. Who knows? The best I can, advice I can give you is what I give my staff. It goes like this. Welcome every human experience. You never know which one is going to turn it all even the bad experience. Sometimes from the bitterest experience comes the greatest awakening. So let down the barriers. Take down the walls. The same wall that keeps out disappointment keeps out happiness. Let life touch you. Don't let it kill you, but let it touch you. Here's the last one. This one's powerful. Resolve. Resolve says, I will. Two of the most powerful words in the language. I will. Benjamin Disraeli once said, nothing can resist a human will. That will stake even its existence on the extent of its purpose. Shortly put, I'll do it or die. See, that's powerful. That could be the day to turn your life around. The world has a strange way of stepping aside when somebody says, I'll do it or die. And says, I will climb the mountain. They've told me it's too high, it's too far, it's too rocky, it's too difficult. It's never been done before, but it's my mountain, I will climb it. Pretty soon you'll see me waving from the top. Or dead.
head on the side, because I ain't coming back. definition I ever got from the word resolve came from a little junior high girl in Foster City, California, up north. I'm talking to the junior high kids one day. I love to ask kids definitions. They come up with beauties. I got to the word resolve and I asked, who can tell me what resolve means? And I got several hands and they were all pretty good, but the last one was the best. Little girl, about three rows back. Held up her hand. She said, Mr. Rowan, Mr. Rowan, I think I know what resolve means. I said, darling, what do you think it means? She said, I think it means promising yourself you will never give up. I said, that's it. Webster, stand aside. That is the definition. Promise yourself you will never. I asked the kids, how long should the, a baby try to learn how to walk? How long? How long would you give your average baby before you shut him off? How long? See, any mother in the world would say, you're crazy. My baby's going to keep trying until it learns how to walk. What a magic point. Now, let me show you what triggers all emotions into activity that brings results. And results is the name of the game. Here it is. Action. Finally, you must do something about how you feel. Jesus, the master teacher, said, Don't just be listeners. Be doers. The world admires the doers. Whatever it takes to get you to try harder, read more, set your goals, and go for it. Here's the next attitude disease. Over caution. Some people never will have much. They're too cautious. Now you can also be too reckless, but you can also be too cautious. This is called the timid approach to life. And my caution was always the risk. Risk used to drive me right up the wall. I used to say, what if this happens? It's called the language of the poor. What if this happens? And on top of that, if this was to happen, look at the fix I'd be in. I better not try. I could always ace myself out. Then I'll tell you what changed my whole life when I finally discovered it's all risky. The minute you were born, it got risky. If you think trying is risky, wait till they hand you the bill for not trying. If you think investing is risky, wait till you get the tab for not investing. See, it's all risky. Getting married is risky. Having children is risky. Going into business is risky. Investing your money is risky. It's all risky. I'll tell you how risky life is. You're not going to get out alive. That's risky. The Englishman says, well, if that's the way it's going to work out, let's give it a go. Right, that's what it's for. Give it a go. Somebody says, yeah, but I'm looking for safety and security. Fine, then huddle in a corner. We'll cover you with a sheet, bring you three meals a day. And we'll protect you, feed you, look after you, care for you. We won't let anything happen to you. And you'll probably live to be 100. The guy said, well, yeah, I'd live to be 100. But what a way to live. Right. What a way to live, safe and secure. Don't ask for security. Ask for adventure. Better to live 30 years full of adventure than 100 years safe in the corner. And see, it's not important how long you live. What's important is how you live. through with this monthly list. In fact, we're almost through. Hang on. The next one is pessimism.